Storm, you're joining me? We got Stormy. I appreciate you. You're gonna get treats for this. I appreciate. Okay, and you're leaving? Got her for the thumbnail. Hey everyone, so today's video is for the newest release from Bee's Knees Locker. I have the new Once Upon a Broken Heart collection. So this release features quite a few different formulations. We have pastel multi-chromes, we have shimmers, we have light reflective glitters, and I also have some mystery polishes. This collection is inspired by the book series by the same name, and this collection will be available starting on February 16th on the Bees Knees Lacquer website as well as their various stockist pages. I will get all into the sale information and all the brand info and all that kind of stuff at the end of the video and it'll also be in the description box if you don't want to wait that long. So before we get into today's video I got a couple of things to mention and the first being if you are new around here hi my name is Nicole it's wonderful to meet you and thank you very much for clicking on today's video. I open new videos every week on generally on Tuesdays and Saturdays it's a whole variety of content however I do have a lot of nail polish content coming up for the next couple of videos. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. How are you doing? Just how's everyone's week going? The products featured in today's video were sent to me by Bees Knees Lacquer for the purpose of swatching and reviewing. This video is also sponsored. Thank you very much Bees Knees for sponsoring today's video and as always, all thoughts and opinions are my own. I don't know what that my own was, but it, it was something. <laughs> So I have nine polishes in the main collection to share with you all today and then I also have two polishes that are exclusive to the mystery bags. As always, when I'm talking about the mysteries, I will have all kinds of warnings and let you all know about the mysteries happening in case you don't want to get spoiled. So down in the description box, I have links to the Bees Knees Lacquer website. I have some of their stockist pages listed as well. I have their social media pages, my social media pages, as well as a link to my blog post on NicoleLovesNails.com where I host all my swatch photos as well as provide a written review. And I feel like most importantly, timestamps are down there as well. One more thing. Regarding my blog posts, I have two blog posts set up for this release. One blog post just has the main collection and then the second one has swatches of the two mystery polishes that I personally received and I also have a list of all the potential mystery polishes in case someone, I don't know, you want to get super spoiled I suppose. So I have those both on NicoleLovesNails.com and they're linked in the description box. Let's just get into this video. First up we have Heartbreak which the brand describes as a periwinkle pastel multi-chrome base that shifts from an emerald to aqua with sparkles of pink and silver light reflective glitter. Heartbreak had a fantastic formula. If you're looking at this one you're saying to yourself uh didn't we just see this last month? This is very similar to last month's same lie lilac. In person the biggest difference between the two that I noticed was the color of the shimmer. The added pink sparkles to this one is the biggest difference between this and same lie lilac. I will have some side by side comparisons coming up in a second. Much like same lie lilac I do not really see the multi-chrome aspect of this polish to my eye. This is a very shimmery pearly sparkly polish and I'm not really getting the color shiftiness that I think of when I think of pastel multi-chrome. This has a ton of sparkle happening in it thanks to all of the reflective glitter pigment in here. The reflective glitter does not give this polish a super thick texture. It doesn't feel like wet sand for the application. Thanks to how this plays around with the shimmery aspect of this polish, I did notice that for the light reflective glitter, it looks like there's a lot more than just silver reflex happening. Like I would have sworn I was seeing blue as well as pink reflex. In typical glitter fashion, this does not dry down smooth so you will definitely want Want top coat to smooth all the glitters out. However, because this reflective glitter seems to be a bit more finely milled, maybe, I don't know if that's a thing, but it's not as gritty as some other reflective glitters. So if you have a thicker quick dry top coat, you can definitely get away with one coat of top coat to smooth everything out really nicely. That is what I did for my full hand swatches. I use three coats for my full hand swatches. Depending on how you feel about visible nail line, you're going to want two to three coats of this one. Removal is going to be very messy and I would not really recommend scrubbing light reflective glitter off of the nail. Uh, you can cause scratches onto your natural nails so definitely use the soak off method or a peel off base coat. Here are some bottle shots of Same Lie Lilac and Heartbreak side by side. You can see the pink sparkliness really well in the bottle. In my opinion, the only true difference between these two polishes is Heartbreak has pink in it. I tried to do a side by side here on one nail, but I don't feel like you can really see the differences too well. Side note, it's surprisingly difficult to paint two colors on one nail like this. And now we have Hope is a Difficult Thing to Kill, and the brand describes this one as a soft gray base with a strong purple to pink shifting shimmer. Hope is a Difficult Thing to Kill had a pretty good formula. As you can see here, this is a very sheer polish. So you definitely need to build this one up to get the most opacity. 
I feel like it's sheer in the sense that it's like an almost milky base. I did find that the base itself seemed a little bit patchy and uneven. I really wanted to stop in two coats for some reason, but I just didn't like how the gray base looked on me personally in two coats. So my Flynn swatches do show this one in three coats plus glossy top coat. Because this polish is so sheer, even though the shimmer is super strong, I did find that if you have any kind of imperfections on your nails, you will still be able to see them through all three layers of this polish, which admittedly is kind of a bummer, but I do think this one still was really pretty. I just loved how glowy the pink to purple shimmer was. You do not get any brush strokes through that shimmer either, which I definitely appreciated. Super easy removal with this one, scrub it off if you want. Next up, we have I Forgot to Breathe, which the brand describes as an orchid purple base with a strong gold to green to blue shifting shimmer. The brand named this one perfectly. This shimmer in here is just... Wow. Definitely, I could see how someone could potentially could forget to breathe looking at this color. It is absolutely stunning. This is another super sheer polish, unfortunately, so you gotta build this one up. And even in three coats, you will still have some visible nailing with it, but the shimmer is so damn beautiful. And in case you couldn't tell, I am a lot more tolerant of visible nail line when I have a contrasting shimmer that really just knocks my socks off just looking at it. I like it a lot. The formula on this one was absolutely fantastic. Not too thick or too thin. You did not see any brush strokes through the shimmer either. I also didn't see any like pigment specks in the shimmer. I will call this one a two to three coater depending on personal preference. On my nails right now, they're as short as they can get. So I didn't see a huge difference between the overall look of the polish, which between two coats and three. Folks with longer nails will probably see a bigger difference in opacity though. And now we have Little Fox, which at Bees Knees describes as a rose gold base with a strong gold to green shifting shimmer. Little Fox had a fantastic formula. I don't know if my eyes were just playing tricks on me, but when I was looking at this in the bottle, I for whatever reason thought this was gonna be like a full on rainbow on the nail. It's not, the shimmer is very much that gold to green. I feel like in the bottle, I could see like a hint of blue at extreme angles on the nail, not really so much. But I fully admit comparing this one to one of my favorite polishes by this brand really made me just like, oh, oh. Okay, you're, you're nice, I guess, <laughs> to this one. But I don't think that makes this a bad polish at all. The shimmer is strong and so glowy. As far as the base goes, I would never have called this a rose gold. My gut is saying call this one like an orangey coral. Like it's a little bit red, it's a little bit pink, it's a little bit orange. So I'm just gonna call it a coral. On me, it's pulling incredibly warm toned. Not quite lobster hands, but definitely I spent some time in the sun. I'm gonna call this one a two to three coater depending on personal preference. For my full hand swatches, I did two coats for this one. Probably said this already, but I just filed my nails down. They're the absolute shortest they can physically be. I do think if my nails were a little bit longer, I would likely would go in for a third coat. So, you know, two to three coater, depending on personal preference. Nothing in here is going to dry down textured, super easy removal, and I had no issues with staining. And now we have One True Love, which the brand describes as a mid-tone grayish base with a glowy red to orange shimmer. One True Love had a fantastic formula. This is gonna be another two to three coater depending on personal preference and application style. For my full hand swatches, I only did two coats. For whatever reason, when I was doing my full hand swatches, I decided to go in for three. I don't remember why. I don't apologize because I never make, you know, mistakes. So here's a third coat. I don't think it made a big difference, but you know, let's keep moving forward. Where hope is a difficult thing to kill has a more like sheer milky kind of base. One True Love has a significantly more opaque base. Again, I'll still call it a two to three coater depending on application and personal preference. Looking at my footage, I do have some visible nail line with this one. Also looking at my footage here, I feel like I got a little bit of shrinkage on one nail too. This is a really nice kind of muted color. I really like how glowy the shimmer is in here as well. This is going to be one of those shimmers that depending on lighting, the shimmers are either going to look like crazy in your face or more muted like it's showing here. So that is One True Love in three coats plus glossy top coat. Once again, super easy removal, no issue with staining. Next up, we have Prince of Hearts, which the brand describes as a blackened multi-chrome base that shifts between a deep indigo to red to gold at extreme angles. Prince of Hearts had a fantastic formula. I don't know why I was struggling so much on this swatch. <laughs> I don't know what was going on here. 
but again, fantastic formula. Slightly on the thicker side, but not at all difficult to work with. In the bottle, I thought this was gonna be really similar to February Polish Pickups Polish Hot Dog from the brand. Other than the fact that this is like a deep purple with like a reddish tone to it, it's not really that similar to Hot Dog. It also has like that nice bit of gold at extreme angles. I'm not generally the biggest fan of darker colors, just it's just not my thing personally, but the color shiftiness and just like the hint of gold. I love gold. I really enjoyed this one. So my photo show Prince of Hearts in two coats plus glossy top coat. I'll call this one a two to three coater, but I feel like most people are probably going to be good in two. And now we have Poison Fairy Fruit, which the brand describes as a sibling to lemon. This is a clear base with a strong blue shimmer, as well as a scattering of silver light reflective glitter. Poison Fairy Fruit had a fantastic formula. I will fully admit, I judge this polish very harshly, solely because lemon was one of my favorite polishes by the brand last year. And I probably would add it to my list of all time favorite bees knee shades ever. So for me personally, this did not live up to the hype that I. I have for lemon, but that's just me personally. Also, quick question. Do you all like seeing light reflective glitter shown this way with like flash? I feel like I still prefer in natural lighting and I'll keep doing natural lighting as long as like I have access to natural light when I'm swatching, but I will attempt to stop complaining about the flash and show you all with flash if y'all want to see flash. And in case you missed it, yes, I did just say I will flash you all if you ask nicely. Oh my. <laughs> Since this one is in a clear base, I often just watch it in three coats. Obviously, you can definitely use this one as a topper if you want. It's a clear base. Much like the other light reflective glitter polishes in this release, this does dry down with some texture. Again, I found one coat of top coat smooth everything out super nicely for me personally, but depending on how thick your top coat is, you might need to go in for two coats to smooth everything out. And again, do not scrub light reflective glitter polishes off. Don't do it. Use the soak off method or a peel off base coat and it will be easier and less messy. And now we have the Archer's Curse, which the brand describes as a sky blue pastel multi-chrome base with a pink to gold to green shifting shimmer, as well as silver light reflective glitter. The Archer's Curse had a fantastic formula. Base does not feel overly thick at all, despite having light reflective glitter in it. I found it applied really nicely and really evenly. This is also a very color shifty polish, which I definitely really appreciated. This is definitely more of what I would think of when I think of pastel multi-chromes. For whatever reason when photographing as well as getting video footage of this one in bright lighting the shimmer looks very pale and pastel i dropped the lighting here so you can kind of see just how vibrant the shimmer actually is i don't know why some shimmers just photograph so strangely i tested it out on multiple cameras and all of my cameras in brighter lighting that it just struggled to show the shimmer the actual color that it is so i really want to stress that like the pale color that you're going to be seeing of my photos and video and other people's photos and videos that the very pale color is not what your eyes are gonna pick up at all in person. This shimmer is very saturated. So even though this is called a pastel multi-chrome, it's not a pastel polish. My very basic understanding of what we call pastel multi-chromes in the indie polish space is essentially a very pale base with a really color shifty shimmer. That's my understanding of what a pastel multi-chrome is. Anywho, my photos show the Archer's Curse in three coats plus one coat of glossy top coat. Again, this is glare. Do not scrub this one off. You'll scratch your nail plate. So, you know, use the soak off method or a peel off base coat. Last, but certainly not least, we have Welcome to the Best Day of Your Life. The brand describes this one as a purple lion sibling that has an amethyst base that has a red to orange to green shifting shimmer and lots of holographic flakies. The brand also says this polish is gonna be very similar to In Good Spirits, but has a slightly darker base. I also agree this is very similar to In Good Spirits, but you know what? I don't care how many times I see polishes that look like this, it's an instant love every single time. I will say though, based on looking at bottles of In Good Spirits and this polish, I would say that the two polishes are close enough that if you have one, you really probably don't need both, unless you're one of the people who like to collect all the Lion Sibling polishes. And if that's the case, RIP to your bank account because there are a lot of them. This had a wonderful formula, not too thick or too thin. The holographic flakies do not give you any kind of texture on the nail, but you still will want top coat because like who's out here not top coating their nails, first of all. In case you haven't noticed I'm weird I'm a weirdo I don't fit in and I don't 
want to fit in. I'm going to call this one a two to three coater again, depending on personal preference. For my full hand swatches, I did opt to go in for three coats, but again, I don't think there was a drastic change on my nails, at least between two coats and three. So I'll, you know, two to three coater, super easy removal, and I had no issues with staining. All right, I'll give my final thoughts for the main part of the collection, and then I'll do sale info, and then I'll get into all of the mystery bag goodness. As far as this release goes, I love this color story. While the brand is not saying that this is like a Valentine's Day release or even an anti-Valentine's Day release, there's something about the color story that just gives me anti-Valentine's Day vibes, but not exactly either. Is it just me? I don't know. I love all of the blues, the purples, the pinks. I love that. My favorite nail polish colors generally are blues, purples, and pinks, and a little bit of teal. So I really love the color story of this release. As far as my top pick goes, I Forgot to Breathe is definitely going to be like my top, top pick from this entire release. I don't know why a purple base with Shifty Shimmer just keeps getting me over and over again. As far as sale information goes, this collection launches on February 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Bees Knees Lacquer website. All the polishes are priced individually between $14 and $14.50 for 15 ml bottles. So there are a thousand bottles per polish available for each of the polishes. Anything sold past that 1,000 bottle cap is going to be put on pre-order and not expected to ship until after March. The sale period ends on February 23rd at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. I do believe at the exact same time this goes on sale on the Bees Knees Lacquer website, it will be available at their various international stockist pages. Bees Knees does also ship internationally from their own website. If you choose to purchase these on the Bees Knees website and you get the entire collection of all nine polishes, there will be an automatic 15% off discount code added to your cart. Also at the time of this launch, we will also have some overpours available from the Divine Rivals Mystery Bags, as well as the Buzzmas items, which I'm personally looking forward to. And those were all previously sold as mysteries and they will be like revealed on the website and you could actually see swatches of them on the website when this one goes live, or at least bottle shots. As far as the mystery bags go, the mystery bags are also called Once Upon a Broken Heart. These are gonna be $25 for two mystery polishes. These are limited to one per person, but not one per household. So in typical BKL fashion, if you wanna get a bag, your mama wants to get a bag, your daddy wants to get a bag, grandma wants to get a bag, everybody can get a bag. <laughs> If you are like me and not a huge fan of mystery bags, these bags will be available at a later date without the mystery aspect tied to them. There are nine potential polishes total. Bees Knees did send me two of the mystery polishes. Before I get into the swatches, here's a picture of the bag that they come in. It's a really pretty bag. If you don't want to be spoiled for the mysteries, feel free to leave now. Before you leave, please leave a comment on what you thought of these polishes. Let me know your thoughts and feelings and opinions. I appreciate you for joining me for today's video. Alrighty, everyone else who wants to be spoiled let's get into the swatches Alrighty, first up from the mystery bags, we have Infinite Endings, which the brand describes as a sheer pink base that shifts from a green to a blue. The brand also says that this may glow in the dark. As you can see here, Infinite Endings is a very sheer polish. I found that the pink base is very soft and dainty, but the shimmer is super strong and very glowy. It has that very strong green to blue color shift. You get a little bit of brush strokiness when you're initially applying the polish, but I found once the polish dries down, you don't get any brush strokes through that shimmer. Because this is such a sheer polish, you can very obviously use it as a topper if you want. I chose to build this one up into three coats. I personally really liked how this looked on me in three coats. This is another one of those shimmers that bright lights seem to wash out the color of the shimmer itself a little bit. I feel like in video, you can see in the green to blue color shift a lot easier in the shimmer, but I feel like in my photos, like the shimmer just looks super washed out, which I didn't find to be the case in person. So the brand does say that this polish may glow in the dark. When I charged this one up with my black light flashlight, I was able to get it to glow a little bit, but you can see here that it fades very, very quickly. So as a glow in the dark polish, I don't think it glows very well. So I don't think they're trying to build this as a glow in the dark polish because like it doesn't glow very well. As like a shimmer polish, it's absolutely fantastic. Well, for this one will be very easy. However, the glow in the dark, I'm hesitant to say glow in the dark pigment is causing the glowing, but whatever it is that's causing the glowing gives the polish like a very very slight rubberized texture feel. So you will want top coat for this one to give it a nice smooth finish. 
And the second polish I have is called Youth, and the brand describes this one as a minty blue base that shifts from cerulean to indigo. Youth had a fantastic formula, however, this is a very sheer polish. You will definitely have very visible, visible nail line with this one. This can't be built up to reach full opacity, so I'm just going to swatch it in two coats here for the live swatch, but my full end swatches do show it in three coats on its own. Here you're seeing the polish in one coat over black. It has the look of like a larger particle size shimmer. If I were to reach for this one again, I would definitely be using it as a topper. I'm not a fan of how this one looks on its own. There's something about it that gives the, the nail an overall very yellow look, like kind of jaundiced or sickly, and I just was not a fan of it. It wasn't like I paint my nails often yellow. It was just like a yellow that the coloring just... It, it, I just was not a fan at all. Although I will admit in low light, which is what you're seeing right here, when the shimmer is really strong and glowy, I liked it a lot more then. But in brighter lighting, it just looks yellow on me and I was not terribly a fan of this one. But again, otherwise me not liking it, it had a good formula. There was no issues with it at all. So that's three coats of youth plus glossy top coat. Easy removal, a little bit messy though. Alrighty, so that's it for the mystery polishes. As far as my thoughts and feelings on my mystery polishes, I really like the infinite endings polish that I received. Alrighty, thank you for joining me for the mystery spoilers. I'd love to know what everyone thought of this release. Like, you're planning on picking up, y'all know the drill. Let me know all your thoughts and feelings. Do you all want to do a live stream for this release to do some comparisons? I don't know. Let me know if you all want to me to do comparisons for these. And since you made it to the end of the video, I'm gonna just award you, award you, reward you? Reward, yeah, reward, not award. I'm going to reward you all with a little sneaky peeky of upcoming Bees Knees. I have their March Polish Pickup and March Hella Hemi Creations popped up in the corner of the screen. You didn't hear it from me though, okay? Like, snitches get stitches. In case you are unaware, you automatically sign an NDA when joining this channel. <laughs> You hit subscribe, you sign the NDA. Sorry, so don't snitch, got it? All right, so thank you all for joining me for today's video. Before we leave, I wanna give a very special shout out to my channel members, Shenanigan, y'all are seriously the best. I'll see you all next Friday for our special channel members only live stream. So just thank you all for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. And if you and if you enjoy like my content, I also post to TikTok and Instagram and occasionally Facebook. I'm basically on all the socials pretty much, so you know join me on them. I'll be posting a lot more on my TikTok that's gonna have some exclusive content that won't be on YouTube. So if you're curious, if you're nosy, feel free to join me over there. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Happy shopping, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Stormy, what you doing, Storms? Storms, what you doing? Say bye to everyone for the video, okay? Storms. Say bye to everybody. <laughs> okay, then. The big ass when I get hot. I ain't looking at the clock, still falling like bra. Yeah, I'm headed to the bus, then I'm falling like yeah.